Going back to around early December of 2022, the fighting near Bakhmut greatly intensified. After over a month of intense fighting, this city has become one of the most devastated areas in the entire war. Ukrainian President Zelensky said of the area, everything is completely destroyed. There is almost no life left. World War I trench-style warfare continues despite the harsh winter cold. They throw grenades to ensure no threat remains. Over the past few months in Bakhmut, there has been at least one firebombing carried out by the Russians. Да еще стреляют. Ох ты ё. While both sides want to minimize reports of their losses in the media, it seems clear that the number of losses has been significant for both. Here are two different clips of the same reported Ukrainian cemetery near Bakhmut. Too many people have been lost already, and it's scary to think that this still may be the earliest phase of the war. Ukraine's official Ministry of Defense Twitter account recently posted this video from a man they've dubbed Captain Imar. He asks Russians to provide coordinates to where their armored vehicles and ammunition are, and in exchange, they will not target soldiers. HIMARS are made by the USA, and they stand for High Mobility Artillery Rocket System. When Ukraine got these, it changed the tide of the war. These weapons allowed Ukraine to take back a lot of their territory. Since then, Russia has strategically adapted to minimize the impact of HIMARS, and in early December, they announced a firmware update to their air defense systems. Experts claim this will allow them to shoot down HIMARS rockets with over 100% more precision. Even before the update, experts say about 75 to 80% of them were shot down. On top of that, Russia has their own weapon system that is similar to the U.S. HIMARS, the Tornado S. On paper, the Tornado should be even better. They shoot larger rockets, greater distances, and with the same accuracy. They also have far more of them than the U.S. has pledged HIMARS to Ukraine. So I ask myself, why haven't they been game changers so far? If you saw my last Ukraine compilation video, you would know that Russia is facing a shortage of drones that have laser-guided targeting systems. My guess is they probably haven't wanted to waste these expensive rockets on targets they've been unable to see. 
Another factor is how Ukraine is aided by the United States satellites for targeting and reconnaissance. Russia also has some satellites, but they are too few and have a much lower visual resolution. As of April, early in the war, they were short of the number needed to have their version of GPS up and running effectively. I couldn't find information on whether or not they have enough now. Russia can't target the United States satellites because they can't risk starting World War III, so Ukraine has the edge as far as that goes. History has shown that winter greatly benefits Russia during times of war. Just look back to World War II when the Nazis delayed their imminent attack on Moscow. It bought Russia time and it allowed them to turn the tide of the war. Winter may benefit them in a similar manner now as they look to solve supply chain issues and boost war manufacturing. It is possible they could get their satellite problems and the reconnaissance problems fixed. And if they do, Ukraine could be in real trouble. On paper, Russia has almost every advantage over Ukraine. The website globalfirepower.com has a detailed military ranking system. They show Russia to be the second strongest military in the world behind only the USA. Russia has over 31 million more people fit for military service, 3,800 more aircraft, and major advantages in both artillery and armored vehicles. Russia also has the upper hand in the economic war, as Europe and especially Germany are struggling with skyrocketing energy costs. Many speculate that the US and Europe can't continue to support Ukraine like they have been for much longer. It is no wonder why Russia hasn't wanted to give up anything during this time of what is likely to be temporary weakness. Putin hasn't even declared war yet, and a huge amount of Russia's strength lies in untapped potential. Plus, there are rumors that Belarus might invade Ukraine from the north during the next spring offensive. They are already having joint military drills with Russia as I record this. There is no doubt that Ukraine has had the advantage for many months now. But the real question is, will it last? On a brighter note, here's a strange video I came across. I wish I knew more about it. But here is somebody bouncing around in a destroyed vehicle while trying to light a cigarette. I'm pretty sure they said it was from the Bakhmut area. I made a previous Ukraine compilation video if you want to check it out. And it will be shown at the end of this video and in the description. If I made any mistakes in this, please let me know. Some of these clips come with almost no explanation and I am also relying on Google Translate as I dig through various sources as well. I'm sure some of you will disagree with me and I look forward to hearing from you as well. I'm not here to lecture you, I'm here to learn from you guys too. I will continue to dig and make videos like this, so if you want to see them be sure to subscribe and hit that bell button to get every notification. This is a pretty new channel so please help out by hitting the like button and sharing it with your friends. Thanks guys, Momento Mori, see you next time.